Okay, lesson seven, we're going to be showing you how to secure NiFi. I'll show you how to create some self-signed certificates and import them into your browser. So you'll be able to use these certificates to uh, pose as different types of users uh, to our NiFi instance that we're going to be running. Uh, I'll show you, show you how to secure NiFi via HTTPS, how do you actually um, set that. And I'll show you how you can have a user request uh, and account access to NiFi. And then I'll also show you how you can actually, instead of having to request an account to the access, you can actually give people default, a default role to come into your NiFi instance. So for example, if you notice in the earthquake dem demo on my website, um, you can pretty much look at it, but you really can't do anything. And that's because I set the default role to just be monitor. So anybody can come into the website that what they want to if they don't have an account. But um, with NiFi, you can establish what the default user, user role is. Um, in that case, it was just monitor. And then I'll show you how you can uh, create accounts and you can administer them, how you can pretty much enable them um, and set, give different users different types of access, accesses to your NiFi instance. And the only thing you really need to do for this demo is if you want to go ahead and create yourself a search directory and the demo directory, and that's where we're going to be putting all of the uh, cert, certs that we're going to be generating today. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is create some certs that we're going to use for our uh, demo of uh, securing NiFi. And to do that, I, create a I created a batch file that lets you create some self-signed certs um, that will help facilitate uh, learning how to do this NiFi secure securing thing. So if you go to my shameless self-promotion website here, uh, silvercloudcomputing.com, and go under Utilities, I have a batch file here that um, will let you create your own cert file. Basically what, how it works is, uh, this is for a Windows environment, but you can certainly convert it over to Linux. Uh, you run this create key.batch file uh, with the parameters of a username and password, and it will actually create a certification file for a cert, a cert file for you, um, as, as well as um, a uh, trust store where that certification file will be stored. Um, the cert is, you define the password for that yourself, uh, for the trust store, I just went ahead and hard coded the password one two three four five. So again, the cert password is kind of up to you. Uh, and for this demo, we're just going to call it password one for the password. Uh, but for the trust store, I did hard code it for password one two three four five. So if you do, if you want to copy this or you want to download it, it's up to you. Uh, if you do copy it, make sure you get the full uh, line here. Some of these lines have wrapped around, so uh, I think uh, like for example, this here should be on this line up here. So. Uh, just be careful. I think this line too needs to be up here. Uh, if you go ahead and copy and paste this, so I'm going to go ahead and download this create bat file here, and what I'm going to do is drag it over into my um, cert directory. So let's go ahead and do that, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, rename it create key dot bat. And there you go. So let's go ahead and go to that directory and let's create some cert files. Oops. There it is. Okay, and again, it's easy to do. You just type create key.bat and we're going to give our first account, we're going to call it admin, the username, and the password is going to be password1. Okay, hit return, and it's going to create about three certs for us and a trust store. So again, it's like a three-to-one thing here. So in this case, I created a cert called admin and created a different type of certification keys. Uh, there's a JKS version, and there's a PCKS 1.2 version as well that we're going to need when we import it into our browser. So let's create a couple more, and then all these keys, of course, are stored in the trust store up here. So let's go ahead and create another one. We're going to create another one called guest1. Again, password is one. And we're going to create another one called guest two. And we're going to create one more and call it NiFi user. E S E R. Okay, so we created four certifications here um, admin, guest one, guest two, which we're going to use in our browser. NiFi user we're going to use in our NiFi configuration and trust store we're going to use the NiFi configuration as well. But for now let's go ahead and import uh, these certs into our browser. So let's go down here 
uh, I'm using uh, uh, Firefox. So if you go over to Options and then go down here to Advanced and do View Certificates, I can do Import. And there are our certs right here that we've just created. You see down here it's PKCS12. That's what you want. So let's go ahead and import these first three certifications. Let's go ahead and import our admin. Click on Admin. Hit Open. Our password is Password1. So we can type and talk at the same time. Yeah, so I got Password1 in there. And guest. Again, the guest user again. Password1 is a password. That one. And we'll do our last one, guest2. Yeah, got that in there. Okay. And you can see, whoops, that now we have imported three of our certs. Okay, and these are what we're going to use to challenge an iFi for identification. But for now, let's go ahead and bring up an iFi. Let me show you how to configure it real easy for um, HTTPS connections. So here's our NiFi conf directory. Um, again, I'm using 2.1, so that's the latest and greatest. Um, and the files that we're going to access for this demo are the NiFi properties file, uh, authority providers, and authorized users. Um, I made a copy of the authorized users because, as you'll see further in the demo, when you, uh, if you're a new user to NiFi, if you want to go ahead and try to access your NiFi securely, uh, what NiFi will do is it'll automatically overwrite this authorized users file and put in the appropriate credentials for you to get access to the file. So I like to keep a copy of it just because I can't remember all these different types of roles and stuff like that. So um, you'll see further on that actually all this stuff here will get wiped out and put in with a user that we defined. Um, so I like to have access to all these different types of availability roles. Anyways, let's go ahead and just do some basic um, stuff for making this secure. So again, here's our refresh out of the box uh, NiFi config file and properties file. So we're going to go, first thing we're going to do is get rid of this HTTP port number and we're going to give it an HTTPS port and we're going to assign that as say 9090. We're going to define our sensitive property key. We'll say some key value. And then we're going to go ahead and define where our key store is. Okay, I kind of jumped ahead and posted post in here, but uh, if you remember we created a bunch of, of uh, certs and the one we're going to use for this um, NiFi properties file is we're going to use the NiFi user JKS and the trust store JKS. So we're going to navigate to this directory and define where these files are so we can actually set, uh, set them up right here in, this, in these uh, key value pairs. Uh, the thing for when you're, when you're populating these files, just remember to use the forward slash instead of the backslash. I know Windows likes to put the backslash, but this is the kind of slash you want to use. So basically, like I said, we're going to use the NiFi user JKS. This is where it is. The type of file it is, since it ends in JKS, is a JKS um, key store type. Remember, we set the password to password1 in this case. And we're going to set both these key passwords to the same value. Uh, the trust store, we're going to use called trust store. Again, it ends in JKS, so the trust store type is JKS. And remember, I hard-coded the password in that um, create bat file to be uh, password12345. Okay. So we're gonna, this is what we set up here, and then we set the port number up here. For neat client authorization, right now we're gonna set that as false, which means that anybody can come to our web server. We're not gonna challenge them for a, a certificate. And then create support new account requests. We're gonna set that to false as well. And I'm gonna show you what this does in a little bit, but basically we're gonna say anybody can come into our um, NiFi server, and we're not going to have a GUI up that lets you create a new account. All right, so let's go set up, start up NiFi and see what happens. So the first thing you'll see when you go to your uh, your website, so again, we're going to do HTTPS, and a port number is 9090. Uh, since we generated these certs ourselves, they're not really um, recognized by an outside source because we didn't pay this, this, some money to a second party, like VeriSign, to say, hey, our certs are, you know, who are we saying we are? But it's just for demo's purpose, so this connection is untrusted uh, because of that reason. So what we're going to do is click Understand the Risks. We're going to add the exception, and we get our cert from our local host, from our NiFi server. Confirm the security exception, and then we are in NiFi. And again, the only difference between this HTTPS secure NiFi and regular NiFi is just basically the, the URL up here, the S and the 9090. Everything else looks the same. You can do everything else that you did before. We can actually create a new processor type. Let's see. So generate flow file if we want. Uh, we can rename it if we want. Let's 
Okay, some name here. You know, anything we could have done with the other knife, I would actually put a background on here. Oh. Let's see. Change the color. Get a nice blue. And again, just like a regular knife I we could do before. The only difference is that everything's secure. What we're going to do next is change this so that we only allow certain users into our account. We're going to challenge users um, that only have access to our account to let them actually get in and view our, uh, our NiFi flow. So let's go see how to do that. Okay, I'm going to bring up the NiFi properties. And the only thing I'm going to change here is we're going to change need client authorization to true. So now you're going to have to have an account with us to get in. And we're going to let people that aren't that don't have an account, we're going to give them the option to request an account. So we're going to turn on the new account request flag to true as well. So let's go ahead and save that and restart NiFi. Whoops. And now you see you're presented with something else here. Now we're asked to uh, present a certificate to our NiFi server. Uh, here's the three certs that we imported. So let's go ahead and go with our uh, guest one. And remember, we don't have an account with guests, so what's going to happen is, well, you see what's going to happen. It's going to come up, and it's going to tell us we don't have an account. But because we enabled the uh, flag to say we can request access, we can actually ask for an account. So we'll say, I need an account. And now um, we can let somebody will go ahead and uh, our admin, we'll show you how to do this in a minute. Uh, we can actually go ahead and enable this later and let somebody go in. If you try to go ahead and uh, say I'm a guest user again and try to go in and, ask and, and access it again, it'll come up and say that you've already uh, waited, you already tried to put in an account and it's pending. So you really can't ask for an account twice. You just have to sit here and wait for somebody to do it. Okay? So the way to get uh, set yourself up an account is there's two ways you can do it. The one way you can do it is actually go into this um, authorized users file and actually put in the DNs and uh, people that you're going to let in here and give them the role. Uh, the other way you can do it is actually have NiFi, I kind of like doing, having NiFi sort of do it for me. And how I do that is um, setting this default user roles here in the authority providers. Basically what this does is if you don't have an account with NiFi, um, NiFi gives you the ability to set a default type of user. So if you look over here, um, and our th authorized users, you see the different types of available roles there are. So I usually what I would do is set this to a role of monitor for the default user roles. And that way, anybody that comes into our NiFi system and doesn't have an account, they're going to be permitted in, but they're only going to be able to have the, ro have the uh, access role of monitor. So let's go ahead and restart that and see what happens. Okay, the only thing I did here was just add the access role of monitor. Again, not too much different. We're still presented with a challenge. We're challenged with what type of cert we're going to use. In this case, we're going to pick the admin cert. So let's go ahead with our NiFi admin cert and hit OK. And you'll see we won't be challenged anymore uh, for a, uh, uh, to ask for an account. We'll be let in right away because we just said we want to have the default role to be monitor. So you can see as default monitor, I really can't do too much. I can just pretty much look at it. I don't have access to anything up here. I can't start things. I can't stop things. I can't view the users. I can probably view the log. That's probably about it. I can't even change the background color here. Okay. Now by doing this, what we did is we also had NiFi go ahead and create this user for us in our authorized users file. So you can see here this file has been updated. So let's go ahead and reload it. And now you can see what NiFi has done for us. It's actually automatically populated this user for us, our admin user and set him as the role of monitor, which was the default role we set here. Now what I want to do now is change this from role monitor to role admin. So he's an admin user, I'm going to give him admin privileges. So again, I can't remember all these different types of roles, so that's why I made a backup copy. So we're going to go with the role admin here, because I like to copy and paste. And we're going to change our admin user from a role of monitor to the role of admin. And let's go ahead and restart NiFi and see what happens. Again, the only thing I did was change the role of admin. And you know what? Let's get rid of this role monitor as well. We're going to force people to log into our system again. Okay, so the two things I did, I got rid of this role uh, monitor for our default user role, because we're going to force people to log in now. And I changed the admin to the role of admin. So let's go ahead and restart NiFi. Okay, so we can start it up. We're going to go ahead and present our credentials as admin. And now we should be allowed in, but this time we're going to have the role of an admin instead of monitor. 
Now, when you look at this GUI, you're going to think, okay, nothing much looks different. I still can't access anything here. I can't change the color here. Well, the one thing you can do as an admin is you can come up here to the users and, and add, uh, you can be like the administrator. You can take away credentials, add credentials. You can even give yourself, if you want, new credentials. So what we can do up here is, as in, since I'm an admin, I give myself data flow manager access, which means that I can have full-blown access to my NiFi flow here. Let's go ahead and reload it. And now you see all this stuff is enabled because I gave myself um, NiFi access. Okay, I gave myself data flow manager. And now if I want, of course, I can change the color, make it green. And I'm an admin, so I can do pretty much whatever I want. Okay, the other thing you probably noticed is, remember we put in a while ago uh, for our guest account to, a guest one account to ask for access, and he said, I need an account. So this is where the infor infor information shows up here. And then since I am an admin guy, I can actually enable this guy and give him access. So we'll give him read-only access and let him look at the provenance stuff. So now if he logs in again, he'll be able to access our NiFi. So let's see what that looks like. Let's go ahead and log in as our guest one. Yes, I'm at NiFi. And now you can see, again, we just have, have monitor access, but now we also have access to this data provenance thing up here because as an admin, I gave myself, I gave this guy access to data provenance. Okay, one more final thing. We're going to log in as an, a, a new guest. The guy is not even here. Oh, let me show you one more thing here. If we looked over here, you see that our authorized user was updated by Niagara Files. Um, our admin role was changed. Uh, we added the role DFM. And then our guest one was added as well with the monitor and data provenance. So let's see what happens if we log in as another guest, guest two. Go ahead and log in as guest two. Okay, another stuff. Let's say another access. And then I'm going to go ahead and log in as an admin and, da, 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 and enable this guy. Oops, I gotta change that URL. Come on. Oh. Okay, and there's guest two, and now if I want to, I can enable guest two and just make him read only. So now he's active as well. And again, you can play with all this stuff. Um, if I wanted to disable guest one, I can certainly do this. I can revoke his access, and so now he can't get in. I can certainly delete him. You know, whatever you want to do, just play with it. But again, the important thing to remember is that you want to play with. See, I already added guest two up here, uh, and I revoked guest one. Guest one's gone. You can see that I revoked it, so he's gone out of this configuration file. So the good thing to remember here is in the NiFi properties, you have the security properties you want to set, as well as the port number, and then the authorized users, which, again, I had NiFi kind of do for me. You can certainly populate this by, by yourself if you want by hand. It's no big deal. And then if you want to have some default role that people, people that don't have access to your system, you know, they aren't in part of this list, um, you can pr you can define it here as say role monitor or something like that. Now somebody comes in, say I set this as well. You already saw this. If I set this as role monitor and somebody came in, um, their name would automatically get added here and have the access as role monitor, just like guest two is. And that's it. Lesson seven recap. Okay, in this lesson I, sh I showed you how to secure NiFi. Uh, we start off by creating some uh, self-signed uh, certificates that we use for various types of demos to show you different types of accesses to NiFi. Uh, we created an admin account that let us, um, we gave our permissions to administer our NiFi uh, instance. And we create, created two guest accounts that we were able to use to, and I was able to show you how you can actually request access to uh, NiFi and how you can actually use the admin account to change those different types of accesses for guest user, guest one and guest two. And then for the NiFi user, I use that as the key for our NiFi server instance and of course, we used the trust store that contained all the keys. We put that in our um, NiFi properties as well. I showed you how to set uh, NiFi to do HTTPS. It's very simple. All you really do is uh, set the port number to whatever you want it to be, the HTTPS port number, and then you disable or just delete um, the setting you have for the HTTP port number. Um, and then you go ahead, and then there's a secure property section in the NiFi.properties that you need to set um, the key store and the uh, trust store. I showed you how to request a NiFi account to access it. 
And basically, you need to set uh, the NIFI security client authorization to true in the NIFI properties file. And then you need to set the new account request to true as well. And you can play with these things. You can set one true, one false, or one false and one true. And just get in there and play around with it, and you get a better understanding of how the whole thing works. And then I also showed you how you can have a default role setting uh, for people that don't have an account to your NIFI. Uh, you can give them uh, default access. Uh, probably want to set it to monitor. And that setting is in the authority providers.xml file. And specifically, again, you want to look at the default user roles. And you want to have it um, match one of the uh, roles that is defined in that in that uh, in that file. You know, a role monitor. There's a, a you know, there's an administrator. All that other kind of stuff. And then I showed you how to create accounts. We had our admin account, and uh, we gave him uh, access to do different things. And then he was able to, uh, in this instance, enable our guest one and guest two accounts. And I think we actually deleted guest one account just to show you how that works. And again, all that is set in the authorized users uh, XML file. And again, this is just a sample of what an entry and that looks like. And here, in this case, for our demo, we had the admin cert that had uh, access to uh, admin, and then it was able to do the DFM role, which basically gives you full-blown access to NiFi, so you can run NiFi and you know create processes and all that other stuff. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to visit our website at www.silvercloudcomputing.com. There's a NiFi web page there that has an actual working demo of a NiFi process I put together. It's pretty in-depth. Um, it uses uh, JMS and some FTP stuff uh, processors. So you can go ahead and look at that. And of course, of course if you have any NiFi specific questions, please, please feel free to email me at nifi at silvercloudcomputing.com. Thanks.